Hey folks, we're sponsored today by Nature Box. Nature Box is a monthly subscription service that delivers better snacks straight to you. These are the kind of snacks you can feel good about. No high fructose corn syrup, no hydrogenated oils, no artificial flavors or colors. Smarter snacks, my friends. Go to naturebox.com slash WTF to get 50% off your first box. All Nature Box snacks are nutritionist approved. They're wholesome, delicious, and delivered right to your face. Go to naturebox.com slash WTF today for 50% off. All right, let's do this. How are you, what the fuckers, what the fuck buddies, what the fucking ears, what the fuck nicks, what the fuck adelics, what the fuck will fins, what the fuck is sugarness? Bah. Now I'm just making noises. Hi, this is Mark Marin. You're listening to WTF, my podcast. I'm once again, just by virtue of the sheer art of it, broadcasting naked from my garage. I'm naked in my garage wearing only a hat, a toque. A toque? Is that what you call it? It's a fan-knitted toque I am wearing beneath my headphones, and that is all I am wearing. I'm not trying to be titillating. I'm trying to be open, man. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be as, as raw as possible in the sense of how, am, how, how does it make me feel? How, what am I feeling right now? What is Mark feeling when he sits naked in his garage? Cause I gotta walk across the little area there naked, so that's something. It's invigorating. I'm hoping it has an effect. Only, if anything, on me. On the show today, Simon Amstel, uh, a British comedian who I saw a while back over at the Largo, Flanagan's place, and I thought, this guy seems a little, a little uncomfortable, a little squirmy. I'm gonna, I'd like to talk to him. I think we might have some things in common. Me and this Amstel kid, and, uh, I have a lovely chat, and it covers a lot of things that, uh, in a different way than I've talked about before. British Jew. That always fascinates me. I don't know why. Before I forget, before I forget, okay, yeah, don't forget, uh, my special Thinky Pain, an hour and a half of Mark Marin comedy is now available, uh, at Amazon and other places where you buy DVDs. So go get that. I'm proud of it. You'll enjoy it. It's a little Tom Sharpling cameo, a little Sam Lipside cameo. It was, uh, it was an amazing night. And, uh, if you don't know me, you'll get to know me. If you know me, You'll know some some of where I'm coming from. Get it. Get the special. Because it's an hour and a half. And now i got to start from scratch and figure out what is going on in my life that is funny. Moving on. My brain was a little dinged up last night. Uh, I went to a modern dance performance. Yes, uh, my friend Moon took me to a modern dance performance with uh, two, with a nine-year-old uh, girl and an eight-year-old girl. I don't get much time. I don't spend a lot of time with kids because you know I got I don't got any. And then uh, you know the brothers' kids are over there in Arizona. There's only so much I can do. But it was quite something, the modern dance business. I guess he was a, a pretty important guy, Wayne McGregor. Wayne McGregor random dance. The performance was uh, far. And uh, was down at the Royce Hall. Look, the, you know, there's nothing we can do. This 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 stuff is going on all around us. There are people committing their lives to dance, and it's easy to condescend. It's easy to uh, dismiss, but it is something, man. I'm not sure how to watch it. I'm not sure how to take it in. But there, there is some skill and some rawness and some uh, electricity and just physical like awesomeness in the modern dance stuff i don't know what i'm looking at but i know like the lights come down people come out they're jerking around they're dancing they're jumping up and down through the air their bodies look beautiful and i'm and i start i I squirt out a few tears right away what is what is that just a couple of people come out dancing and i and i'm squirting out tears because i guess i'm moved by the humanity of it by the humility of it just bending around, flying through the air, twisting, contorting, 
touching each other, doing things with each other, you know, like back and forth stuff. And then, then some other people come out, then a few other people. My brain's kind of bending to sort of find narrative in it. It's like, oh, is she with that guy? I don't think she should be with that guy. Oh, there's another guy. Oh, the three of them together? Now what's the problem? Seems like someone's upset. He just ran over to the other side of the stage. Oh, who are these people? Wow. Oh, they're doing that. Look at them moving around, moving around, moving around. Now a little walking, a little moving around. So who's with who? What's going on? What's the story here? Oh, everyone's laying down now. Oh, my God. Look at that guy. How the hell did he do that? He picked her up. She's in the air. Oh, I don't understand what's happening. But it was pretty fascinating. It's very, uh, it's, it's a beautiful art form, but I never go. Do you guys go? Do you ever think, like, let's go to see some modern dance? I think it's one of those things where you're like, I don't know. Usually it's like, it's, it's almost like a, a traumatic experience from college. Yeah, I, I got dragged to one by this woman in college and, uh, nope, not going back. I think that was the second time in my life that I sat down for a modern dance performance. And it's important. It's an important art form dance. It's not unlike when I went to the opera or perhaps to the symphony where it's this organic human thing. You can hear, you know, the, the feet scuttling on the ground. You can hear when they touch each other. And this particular performance had a lot to do with like jerky movement. I don't know if it's, uh, if it's the crunking or the twerking that has made its way into modern dance because I don't keep up. I'm not on the mailing list as to what's being integrated from the, uh, from the streets into the uh, vernacular of modern dance. But, uh, I do have to say it was, um, uh, was very impressive. All in all, I was very happy I went because it was enriching. It enriched me in the sense that it's like, oh, my God, this is a way of expressing yourself. This is something people do, and it's amazing. I just don't make time in my day for the arts. And I think it's important as we uh, drift further and further away from the vessels that we are. It's important to go witness a bunch of sort of a bunch of meat puppets dancing around playing instruments and stuff that's not just rock and roll good stuff good stuff still naked hey i don't know if you know this but postage rates went up today people did you forget to go out and load up on forever stamps do you need to get those little three cent stamps because of all the old stamps you have laying around if you were using stamps.com like i do you wouldn't have to worry about all that with stamps.com you can buy and print official u.s postage right from your desk using your own computer and printer you can do it naked And Stamps.com always updates the postage rates for you automatically, and they don't charge a fee to do it, unlike those postage meter companies. So at Stamps.com, you'll always get the exact postage you need for any letter or package, the instant you need it. You'll never have to go to the post office again, and you'll never have to worry when they change the rates. Right now, there's a special offer for you. When you use my promo code WTF, start a no-risk trial with a $110 bonus offer, including a digital scale and up to $55 of free postage. Don't worry, go to stamps.com and before you do anything else, click on the microphone at the top of the home page and type in WTF. That's stamps.com. Enter WTF. So what else is happening? Today on the show I talked to uh Simon Amstel, and we bring up Daniel Kitson, who is a British comedian who many of you may not know, but you should familiarize yourself with him if you can find something uh, of his to look at. He's uh, quite a genius. And quite an interesting, uh, uh, unique voice. And I just wanted to, to, to have you know that, that he is, uh, not infamous, but, uh, a mythical presence almost in, uh, in British comedy, certainly. And, and, and some Americans know him in, in that he, like, he won't do my podcast. He doesn't do much TV. He doesn't like to record himself necessarily. He's just, he's an oddball that is, is, uh, that keeps it very pure. And, uh, I just wanted to give you a point of reference. Uh, for when me and Simon start talking about him. That's who he is. Go see if you can find some stuff. That Daniel Kitson fella. What else do I got to tell you? Oh, well, uh, Moon showed me an amazing thing. And I'm just going to hip you to this. For those of you who are interested. I don't know what the hell chia seeds are all about. I don't know why people eat them. I don't know how people eat them. They don't taste good to me. That I still, you know, I'm old enough to remember the Chia Pet. And that's that to me is what they were used for. But now everybody's eating them because, I don't know, somebody decided it was good and a bunch of other people decided to go along with it. If you get some coconut milk and you put it in a glass and then you fill it uh, you know, about uh, one to four, I, that's what I did, uh, With you would go one to four Chia Seeds to coconut milk. And I, you know, I used unsweetened coconut milk and I, I put a little uh, stevia in there. So it's one part... 
uh, the, the chia seeds, and then, then three parts coconut milk with a little sweetener in it if you're not using sweeten, and you put it in the fridge for like six hours or overnight, and you wake up and you have like coconut tapioca pudding, and it's fucking unbelievable. How simple is that? So needless to say, I think I've eaten eaten my quota of chia seed for at least the week. But that's a good time thing to do right there if you want something to do. Also, tomorrow I am directing the final episode of Marin. I don't think it'll air as the final episode, but it's the final episode of my shooting of Marin at I, uh, for IFC Season 2. And I am directing. I'm very excited. I'm a little nervous, but I think I got a handle on it. And it's a, it's a very personal episode. So that's thrilling. And I also want to say that I got I got to be honest with you. Shooting the second season of, of my show for IFC was just great. It was a blast. We got a lot of great scripts. A lot of great people worked on the show. The crew was great. Everything was amazing, and I had a good time. And I'm trying to keep that on the down low. I don't know why, but I had a great time, and I'm very proud of what we did there. I'll let you know how the directing goes. I'm a little nervous, but I got a, I got a powerful crew. We're working as a well-oiled machine, so someone will pick up the slack when I don't know how to say... Uh, uh, can we get an over here, or are we going to uh, get uh, coverage on both of those things? Can we hinge here? Where's the wedge? Um, okay, let's do the master. We're going to go in for close-ups. I've heard a lot of these things used, but I'm not exactly sure what they we- mean, so someone will clear that up for me, right? Won't they? Won't they? Hey, are you having a Super Bowl party? You want to load up on some snacks that everyone can enjoy and feel good about? Well, you've still got some time to go over to Nature Box and get your snacks before the game. When you use Nature Box, you can get a box of delicious snacks delivered to you every month. Great snacks, smarter snacks, no high fructose corn syrup, no hydrogenated oils, no artificial flavors or colors. That's colors in French and Spanish, I believe. Each snack faces strict quality standards and their nutritionists improved. A nutritionist said, I approve of this. And you can't beat the convenience since they come right to your door or get them sent straight to your office. No more falling asleep at your desk because you binged on candy bars earlier in the day. Nature Box has dried fruits, whole wheat fig bars, all kinds of granola, savory or sweet. It's your choice, pals, people, folks, ladies. Or if you want it all, Get a rotating surprise box each month. Different sizes are available, too, if it's just for you or if you want to get your family or coworkers onto better snacking. Feel good. Feel better about how you snack. Go to naturebox.com slash WTF for 50% off your first box of goodies. It's time to get snacks that you can feel good about at naturebox.com slash WTF today. 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 Today, let's talk to Simon Amstel, a British Jew, hilarious guy. So I was in Texas. Yeah. There's a man sat opposite me wearing a Mark Marin T-shirt. Really? Yes. And you and a cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I say, how come you have a Mark Marin T-shirt? Did you really? Yes. He looks surprised that I know it's a Mark Maron t-shirt. I say it's because I'm a brilliant comedian. Uh-huh. And uh, he says you got him through his divorce. What? You got him like... Oh, You, you got him through his divorce. Oh, I got him. Listening to this podcast. So, oh. Isn't that good to hear? It's great to hear that. That's the service I'm providing yeah. people. There are people in pain, in trouble, and, and I think that uh, the soothing tones of my trouble... Mm. <laughs> Elevate yeah. them. Your misery meant that his misery was a bit, a bit, yeah. you know, lessened. Well, you're a little heavy-hearted, aren't you? In yeah, general, yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I saw <laughs> you. All I, I've got. I saw your. Uh, I saw. I saw numb when you were here. I came to that. Yeah, I Largo. remember. Yeah, Largo. Yeah, yeah. and I, I immediately identified with you. I don't remember exactly what the show was about, but I remember thinking, like, I get this. Uh, I know exactly where he's coming from. It's difficult being a self-conscious and heady. As mm. we are, and moving through the world without being or appearing self-conscious and heady. <laughs> Do you yeah. have that issue? Yeah, it's just tricky, isn't it? And most yeah. people just drink alcohol, so it's all right. You never drank. I, I tried it when I was young. I just didn't like it. Yeah, didn't stick. No, didn't take. I tried. Tried drinking. I tried smoking. None of it. None of it. Felt no right. relief. No, nothing. Nothing. Uh... <laughs> Nothing. The only thing I tried that I really liked, although I'd never really do it, is magic mushrooms. Yeah? 
I, I found those to be lovely. How many times did you do that? I don't know, like three times in my life. Uh huh. The first time I did it, I had a, a gig in the evening. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought that I thought they'd sort of worn off. Yeah. No. But they were still there. Yeah. And it was around the time where I was still, you know, on that on the like the circuit for five years, yeah. trying to find, figure out who I, who I was, and uh, I figured out that night who I was. Did there you was remember a, it? Yeah, and I thought, I can't take Magic Mushrooms every time I have to do a gig, but I can remember this feeling. There was a looseness, there was uh-huh. a, a funniness that uh-huh. I found, a freedom. A lightheartedness, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you just so and that was you trace it to that moment. I you, think so. I mean, apart from just doing it quite a lot, there was a feeling of oh, this isn't important or this isn't hard. This right. is like this is just a group of people laughing. This is just joyful. Yeah, there's nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, nothing to be afraid of. And it was the same material, but suddenly I was like finding the just the joy in it. I suppose just the joy. Well, how old were you when you started doing stand up? Well, thirteen. <laughs> yeah, at your bar mitzvah. That might be a mitzvah. No, thirteen. Uh, uh, like a. It was the annual, uh, like variety show of for the, real of the yeah of the drama club that I used to attend. Okay, and you chose to do stand up. Yes. Did I kick you there? That's okay. I'm sorry. It's all right. For so close. Is okay. Yeah. I know. Um, what was I saying? Oh yes, yeah, so I went. I used to. Be, I was a very shy child, and a teacher suggested that I go to a drama club to bring me out of my shell a bit. Yeah. And then I guess I really got into it because I. Um, I asked if I could do some stand-up comedy at yeah. the show. And did you had you you'd seen stand-ups before? I'd and you seen liked... some like late night television, like some stuff in the Montreal Comedy Festival shown on Channel Four in the Is UK. Is that where they show it? Because I've never I know I've done a, several of those uh, those tapings, yeah. but I don't know where they show it. Everywhere apart from America, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you saw some of that? Yeah, and I really I liked. I don't know if it was just that I liked that it would just be me on the stage. Probably. But, you know, I really liked, I think I, I, I liked the idea of it. They, they looked silly. They looked fun, those people. And they looked like they had uh, control of the situation. Yeah. There, there's something, that I remember seeing it when I was a kid. I'm like, that guy's got, he's he's in charge there. He's yeah. got a... But not in an alpha male way. In no, a way no, that no, I no. that I could emulate, maybe. Right. Because they were so sort of, uh, you know, they were, I, I don't know, that in that way that... Um, they were entertaining, you yeah. know, and they seemed to, to, to make people feel better. Yeah, that's a nice thing to be able to do, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, if it works. I don't it think, works. I don't think that was my, my specific agenda for uh, half of my uh, stand-up career. I'm not sure I was in it to make people feel better. I think I was actually in it to drag them down to the, the level <laughs> I was at. <laughs> I think it's all, I think, well, I think, I don't know about you, but I think for me, the the stuff that happens is is purely coincidental and everything like it's a purely selfish act yeah like we're just doing it because we like doing it and that the the laughter is happening is uh, is good news and that if anyone feels better because they relate to something that's good news but we're really just doing it because we like it right i think so i think that for me um i think i really think i got up there to find myself oh yeah that, that, but yeah i don't yeah i suppose that's i mean that I've, i i don't know if i'm thinking about that just in hindsight and having heard that's Jerry true. Seinfeld talking about it being a thing of self discovery, and, and I go, oh yeah, that's that is what it is. But uh, well, I think that really because of what I grew up in, I grew, up, I, I, I don't, I don't know how you grew up, but we can talk about it. That my parents are very selfish, right. so I think in order to sort of get attention, right. you know, I had to be fairly kind of like dramatic about yeah. things, okay. and I think it was a way to get up on stage and like I got something to say. <laughs> what do you mean yeah. by they were selfish? They were very, uh, you know, not great emotional boundaries. Like I, I really don't look at my parents as uh, as parents as much as these people I grew up with that you know seemed to you know be around. You know, they were not very nurturing people. They were kind of self involved. Neither of them, both both self involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yours? Mm, I well, I suppose I my my story about my self is that I. Uh, yeah, I was sort of the product of a divorce. So that first stand-up gig when I was thirteen, that happened in the same year that my parents divorced. So there might, I think it might have been a diversion uh-huh. thing. I was, I think I was trying to say, look, let's let's not be sad. Look, I'm doing this over here. So <laughs> I, I think, I think, which I think I'm still doing. Oh, that's so pr- to avoid pain. Yeah, to avo- and you know to make my mum laugh rather than carry on crying. Maybe a bit of that. Oh, that, well, that's. A, I mean, like that. That's a tough age to to experience that at because you're aware. Yeah, you're, you know, you're coming into your own uh, madness, whatever that is. Exactly. Yeah, I should have been. I should have been just going through puberty, right? Not dealing with. Uh... <laughs> so I was learning to do magic tricks and, <laughs> and juggle, <laughs> and, uh, hide the tears. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, I'm ju- look, I'm juggling. I'm juggling clubs. Look, look. <laughs> I'm not crying. Everything's look, I'm not fine. Crying. Look, I'm not even I'm not dropping them. I'm not dropping them. Please stop crying. I can't. I don't. I won't drop them. The crying magician. That's a good angle. Yeah. So what? What were your? What you? You grew up Jewish. 
<laughs> uh, in yeah, England. Only, only culturally, really, not religiously. Other yeah, yeah, than me the, too. The circumcision and right. the, the bar mitzvah. Yeah. That, well, I think that's the same with uh, most Jews. I think yeah. you just do your part. The first one, you don't have any real control over. Strange, though, isn't it? That they just cut a piece of your dick off? Strange. It, it is a little weird, isn't Don't it? Don't you think it's, I mean... And it, then and there's a guy there, there's a service, people come. Yeah. It's not like a, it's not like just at the hospital, you know, it's usually done at a home. Yeah. Oh, there's a, a party. Yeah, it's a, yeah. I had a joke about like, the like, they weren't even religious, you know, they cut off, like, the buffet wasn't even kosher. <laughs> yeah, like, right. Don't care, we don't care about that bit, we just love the cock cutting. Yeah, yeah. That's our thing. <laughs> You know, they did it because it was the convention of the people yeah. around them because they thought we better cut off a bit of our child's penis. Otherwise, yeah. people will think we're weird. Yeah. And so they'll be able to identify each other in the bathroom. Yes. Yeah, so maybe but, a bit of that. I uh, no, know. but I, I don't know what the the uh, <laughs> the original reason was. But, yeah, it is cultural and everyone, you know, gets it. I, th- I think most people are circumcised than not. In America, is everyone circumcised? Well, I don't It's not a law. But uh, no, no. <laughs> It's, it's a, I, you know, you can choose, uh, parents can choose not to do it, but I think it's an option. It's so strange. I remember the first time I saw one that wasn't circumcised and I found it sort of off-putting. Well, I remember the first time I saw a vagina. Yeah. I just assumed that everyone had a penis. Really? How old were you? I was a 25. (laughs) (laughs) That's such an old joke. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, you had to. You know, like I was a kid in 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 my garden, I think, and there was like the next door neighbor's, I don't know, girl child. Yeah. What is, what the hell is that? (laughs) Why is... What's she missing? Yeah. You just thought girls had... She's all broken, that girl. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But, uh, But I noticed that like in your show... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Vag- uh, vagina's not your thing, anyways. Uh, no, but you know, I accept them. Sure. Well, that's good. Uh, that's good. There's a, there's a lot of them around. It's nice that you. Yeah, accept I came. It. I came from one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm. Here, I'm into them actually. Yeah. I'm really into them. But the one thing I noticed about uh, the um, like that's different. But the idea that you're gay was not the theme of the show, and you just you didn't even really acknowledge it as anything to be like. Uh, and yeah, it's not. It's not a thing. Right. Yeah. And is, so. was that a conscious choice, though, to sort of not... Because, like, most gay comics that I've known, certainly American ones, I mean, that's their hook. They're, that's their, <laughs> they're gay. I suppose uh, when I first came out, uh, it was something I was thinking about a lot, so I wrote about it. Yeah. But after that, I mean, it just hasn't been something that's really... doesn't do anything, you know? It doesn't, it's not right. It's not in my life. It's in my life. Do I have a boyfriend or not? Right. You know, did, I, did something terrible happen when I was having sex or not? You right. Know, it's, it's not really... And I'm I've sort of I think uh, and and to be more uh you know deep and adult about it I suppose uh I'm not really into any kind of label I think comedy is a thing that can bring people together rather than you know I'm not really into and I don't like you know I don't like anything that's like Anything that's like, well, okay, so I'm a Jew and therefore something. Right. No I, I no 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 therefore. Yeah. You know, what about what about you know, it's always like it's always a bit false. Yeah, it's always like yeah, that sounds well, sound sort of funny. Oh yeah, you're a Jew and there, so therefore this. But actually, you could have said I'm a human being and therefore this. No, I think that's yeah, stereotype, self stereotyping yeah, okay. uh, to to culturally identify is kind yeah. of tedious. And it feels like so uh, it's just so easy and untrue at the same time. Uh, I quite I, you know I lo- I watched a lot of Eddie Izzard when I was growing up. Yeah, and he he's a transvestite who is not really talking about being a transvestite. And I, I quite like people who just happen to be the thing, and it isn't their career. Yeah, but he did wear some spectacular outfits. Yeah, but then didn't really go on about them. <laughs> no, I You know. know, he comes out in the outfit, and then he's talking about Star Wars or whatever. You know, it's, it's a, a little Star jarring. Yeah, so that had a big impact on you? Yeah, I liked I liked him a lot. I liked him, and I uh, liked Bill Cosby a lot, and uh, Roseanne, those sitcoms. Yeah, Bill Cosby's great. Mm, I saw him at the Montreal Festival. You did? For like two, when? Two hours. Uh, I don't know, what was it, three three or four years ago? Was it life-changing? It was a bit. Why? I had to rush straight to my show from seeing his show. Yeah. Uh, and some of his Cosbiness, Cosbiness, some of his Cosbiness stayed in me from my show, and it made me a bit better. I, I had the same experience with him, yeah. watching him uh, again later in life, That the, the sort of idea that... You kind of you can really choose what's funny, like you know you can right yeah it, it, without like there was something about him where it, it looks so effortless, and it doesn't seem like he's processing any sort of 
not even it's not fear but even structure in a way he's just sort of like i'm gonna do this i am who i am i'm gonna sit down yeah. and we're going to move through this yeah he didn't even want the applause at the beginning oh really he, ca- he came on in this you know in in like a tracksuit. yeah sat on his chair and people were applauding like crazy because it's like this legendary man walking out and he's you know just like okay. You know, he's really? like waving his hand saying, please don't applaud. This is just ridiculous. Why would you? Come on. Let's yeah. not waste time. Yeah. He sits down and, you know, then he just starts talking. He maybe fiddles with some tissues. Uh-huh. And then there was a bit about like five five bits in where he suddenly just says, uh, and this is the only bit I can remember. It's not funny, but it's, it really made me go, wow, this guy has no fear. Yeah. He suddenly just said, the... Microphone level is about one notch too high. Can we bring it down one notch? <laughs> so the microphone then gets lowered. Yeah. And he carries on. Doesn't make a joke about that. Doesn't say... But, but just he, carries on. Right. The microphone is too high. <laughs> but he does say it like Cosby. So you're, you're, like Cosby. you're already like... Eh, yeah, but you think yeah. is this going? What right. is this... And there's the nothing. Microphone. Yeah. yeah. And so then when I did my show in Edinburgh a few years ago, uh, the air conditioning was a bit loud. And mm-hmm. I remembered Cosby. Right. <laughs> and I said, the, can we turn? <laughs> the air, but even I had to like do like a joke after that. Like I had right. a fan on, my, on, on the stage and I said. Because of the fear. Because like, I was like, I can't just leave that in the air. Yeah. I can't just carry on with my story. But he had, he had no fear. He, had, he could just keep going. Yeah. So when you were 13, yeah. your parents get divorced. What did your dad do? Dad uh, ran a sort of courier company. Yeah. Yeah, or owned, owned and ran and a were you, company. Did you still get along with both of them after that? Mm, dad became the enemy. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, I've since sort of dealt with that, and obviously I sort of made that up. And he's what, like, what, like, well, How old were you when you finally dealt with it? Uh, 24. Wow. It's a long time, right? Yeah, a long time to be sort of hating someone. I yeah. Think. Yeah. But you didn't you didn't see him when you were a kid either. I did a bit, but I always found it quite boring. And I found and I, and you know I'd, I'd I'd really I'd really you know bought into this story that he was the bad guy and that my mum was perfect. Uh-huh. And you know neither of those things are true. Right. It's nonsense. Yeah, I uh, I'm going through a period right now with my father. I'm 50, and I'm I'm he's uh, I'm not talking to him. You're not talking to him. No, I'm going to have to. Go on. What's going on? Uh, <laughs> he got offended by my uh, a book I wrote and a TV show because I he was in it. You know, I characterized him. Oh yeah, I've done that. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, I always get annoyed. My dad doesn't get annoyed. He's oh, really? I feel like, what, did you not see it? <laughs> Why are you? Why, <laughs> no response say at all. Something about it. I did it. How did you handle it though? Did you were you honest or did you throw him under the bus? Was there spite? You no, know, it was kind. Of, I was. I think the reason that there's no anger about it from him, or if there is, he's not doing anything about it i think what i'm always up to is coming from a place of self-discovery and just trying to you know just trying to figure things out yeah. rather than you know it's never coming from right i'm gonna get you now yeah. i'm gonna do that okay now i'm gonna tell them right it's never that so i so i think that it probably comes across that it's just me trying to figure out what 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 has happened to me and who why i am how right. i am and and it's uh i find it very healing all the writing and the i i i, I you know it brings me closer i think to him I think so. I you know, when I looked at my stuff, I had to kind of figure it out. Like, was there spite? Was there a bit of payback? You know, because when somebody's had an effect on your life, if it's negative, mm-hmm. it becomes tricky to frame it. You know, I, I, obviously they're part of our lives, and it is self discovery. But you know, on some level, you're saying, "Well, that guy kind of fucked me up." Yeah. Uh, I love him. I think, but yeah. <laughs> it, I, you know, it's a problem. What did you? So, what did you say about him? What was the bit that uh, he wasn't keen on? Uh, that you know he's manic, he's bipolar, uh-huh. and uh, and like you know people know. I mean you got to be you know, but he he didn't want that many people to know, right? And uh, some a, a writer friend of mine he said like what's his problem? But bipolar is like the new it's like diabetes. <laughs> hey, everybody's bipolar. Who cares? You know, but he's very selfish too. So like he thought it was going to have some major implications on his life, but uh, he's emailing me again. So I think it's time to reach out eventually. And what's the, oh so you're not talking to him. Kind of. I mean, you know, I knew I just didn't want to deal with it. I didn't want to deal with the negotiation. You know, the book was written. The show was made. Mm -hmm. There's no negotiating. You know, there's no sort of like what, you know, there's no conversation to be had other than it's happening. uh, You know, prepare yourself. Right. For did, you, did you say that? Did you say prepare yourself? Pretty much. I, I, I said, look, you know, I, I don't think. Well, he was uh, he thought that something dramatic was going to happen in his life because of it. I don't think so. 
What did you say about your dad? Mm, well, in the in the last stand up show, yeah, I spoke about how uh, in numb, yeah, in numb, he, I, I, you know, I spoke about how sometimes it's you know it's it's hard go, going over to his house. It's you know it's not always fun, mm-hmm. and and I didn't and that we didn't you know, talk for a while, not for any reason, just a sort of lack of joy, really. Yeah, and then he phones and says, you know, I've been thinking, and uh, you know, one day I'm going to be on my deathbed. And if we don't have this relationship, there'll be regret. And so now I make sure I, you know, see him once every month or two, and I always regret it. <laughs> but then I, and this is the worst line I think I've ever said. I say, but you know, when he dies, I'm going to feel pretty good. <laughs> and he didn't seem to mind that. That seemed to be all right. He saw it. Yeah, he came. He didn't come to see it. You know, there. Are, I think there are always moments with these people. Where, these people we call parents. Yeah, where yeah. you. You, you you know you forget that they've got they've just got their own stuff going on this to do with their parents right and there was one time when he came to see a show yeah I was really pleased he'd come to see the show because my mum comes to everything right and she couldn't be more proud and, and too proud and it's too much sometimes and mm. my dad it's like okay come on t- tell me I'm good just tell me something here. yeah and he came to the show and there was like a little party thing afterwards and he like, left very quickly I was like oh fuck I was like what do I have to do and sometimes like, you know, after you've been on stage for an hour an hour and a half you think how funny do I have to be, Father? Yeah. How? Yeah. What do I have to do for you? Yeah. So he left, and I was like, okay, you know what? He came, it's fine. And then he emails the next day, and he says, um, he says, I'm so proud that not only not only can you do that on stage, but that you're able to be so sociable afterwards at the party. And what I realised is that because I was very shy as a child, I think he has the same shyness, but without going to the drama club. Right. And. He's not leaving the party because he hates me or he can't, you know, it's because he can't be at a party. Wow. He's the, sa- we're the same sort of awkward person. I uh-huh. learned that through writing Grandma's House, this sitcom that I made. I was doing a scene with this actor who was playing him. And, I, and you know, I didn't even know during the writing of this scene with uh, my father and I what it was about him that I, that, that I you know, struggled with. I realized it's, that we're similar. Right. And it's with, like, the same idiot. That's the problem. Right. And, uh, so it's you know it's I don't know I don't know what I don't know what well, you these people but but <laughs> but no but I mean I, I, that's a like an important realization yeah because you resent them because you know you have expectations of them that they're supposed it's to the be... expectations it's always right. expectations what I learned from writing this sitcom about my family is that and uh, what I learned in terms of how you can be with your family at peace and yeah. to- completely content at some sort of family event is you have to go there and not expect them to be any different to how they were last time. <laughs> And yeah. then, then it's fine. Yeah. They're not going to change. They're not going to... And if, if, if they do, it won't be because of you. It won't be because you've tried to fix them. And, you know, that's what I... I mean, that was the, that was big. Right. I was like, oh, they're just... that's, And then you find them funny. Then they're... they're oh, that's so funny that they're like that. They're How just ridiculous. People. They're, they're just, just pe- people. Right. And, all, and, and, and beyond that, just sperm. Yeah. They provided the sperm. <laughs> so I'm here. What else do you want? <laughs> <laughs> but there, but I think the fight, the fight is really that there was some expectation earlier to to be parented a certain way. So there's some part of you, right. if you if you do have some like uh, you know um, resentment about it mm-hmm. in in how you were parented, there's that same part of you is expecting to be parented, and yeah. like that fucking ship has sailed. It's so gone. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. So once you let that go, you realize, oh, you guys are just these people. Yeah. With weaknesses and character flaws and everything else. And yeah. I just have to accept you as that and, and, and take, uh, you know, take up the slack. And then you can go to, if you can, if you can get Oprah enough on yourself. Yeah. Being grateful for exactly how they were. How are you with that? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I, I feel like I've got a pretty cool, fun life. Yeah. And, you know, the fact that I started doing stand-up when they divorced, I wouldn't be here I mean, in whatever this is, what are we in a it's shed? In a garage, yeah. I wouldn't be in this garage yeah. talking to you if they hadn't been exactly the parents that they it's were. A big payoff. And what? A, yeah, what a dream! <laughs> what a dream! I mean, I could have been happy, but how lovely to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you really consider that moment at thirteen, the day, the day you started stand up, because you. It, it wasn't went... conscious at the time, but now I now that I, you know, if I look back at the dates, I think, oh well, that's strange that they, those two things happened at the same time. Do you remember? Um, what you talked about? I uh, I was a really weird. It was a combination of stealing some stuff from those shows, from, yeah. like these weird Canadian comedians, yeah. and also like writing some stuff that was so uh, 
that that was like really out of character. But you I were mean, 13. Yeah, I mean, well, in contrast to who I am now, I suppose. I mean, there were jokes about environmentalists being a bit, like, smelly. Like, like, <laughs> like really like really weird opinions to 13 have. 13-year-old opinions. Yeah, like, but it was like, why? It was like, there was a thing about these, these environmentalists who care more about recycling their toilet paper than actually using it. No, like, what is, who is that guy? It's what? a poop joke. It's yeah, a poop give, joke. You'll give, give the 13-year-old a break. I suppose so. <laughs> yeah, but what was good is that the laugh, there was some laughter for yeah. whatever reason, whether they just thought I was a weirdo or cute or something. You are a kid. Uh, and I like that, I like that sound. And yeah, and, did like you, and when was the first time you started doing it in clubs? 18. Well, no, actually, before that, there were, like, a few different competitions. There was, like, a BBC New Comedy Awards competition, so I was, like, 17 when I entered that, and there was, like, there were, like, about maybe 10 gigs between 13 and 18. Yeah. And then at 18, I retired. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> and then started again when I was 21. Oh, is that true? Yeah. To go to college? No, I, I got a job on a kid's cable channel, uh, Nickelodeon. Yeah. Where I sort of introduced the Rugrats and stuff like that. Oh, so you were the, the guy in between the shows. Yeah. Hey, kids. Yeah. You were uh, a presenter of things. Exactly, yes. Reading the prompter. And I thought, well, I'm, now I, I'm, I'm introducing the Rugrats. I've made it. What do I need this stand-up nonsense for? Isn't that interesting? Because I, I, I had a gig like that where, you know, in a, you know, I had already been doing stand-up a while, but I got a job hosting something. I didn't want it. It was not my <laughs> dream, but I wasn't making any money. Right. But I, I, w I remember being furious that I wasn't being uh, written jokes and that, like, you know, it wasn't funnier. I was like, come on, I got more than this. Didn't you feel that right. frustration? Like... I got a, you know. I did, and I got, I got sacked in the end. Because? Because I kept trying to sort of be funny, and it didn't suit, you know, it wasn't right for, for the, you know. Did you the, miss comedy? Were you, were you in it for uh, stand-up, or were you in it just for a gig? Uh, to get a gig No, like I love television. When I was a, when I was a kid, yeah. it was really more television than stand up for me. Right. I, I, I worshipped certain TV hosts in the UK. Like who? Chris Evans. Uh huh. I was just in love with everything he did. Uh, the Big Breakfast, and then TFI Friday, uh -huh. and Don't Forget Your Toothbrush, and I just I just loved I I, I loved him. And he was a, you know he was a weirdo. He was like he looked like an oddball, uh -huh. and he commanded you know this you know this these shows mm -hmm. and invented them and. Uh, just thought he was really uh, he wasn't funny in the way a comedian is funny but he he he, he was very natural and uh, joyful and silly and so the the sort of the job linking the shows on Nickelodeon was quite similar to the way the Big Breakfast worked. You had a I loved all the paraphernalia. You got a clipboard and right. you got an earpiece. Yeah. And, uh, you know there was a floor manager that you saw saying five four three two. You know and all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah. I loved. I was I couldn't believe that I was there doing it at yeah. eighteen. At eighteen and um and then what happened. And then I was, you know, I was trying to be. I also loved hosts who were a bit sarcastic and a bit cheeky with the guests. Yeah, and that didn't go down too well on Nickelodeon. No, <laughs> and so they they you, they said you can't be here anymore. Did you have guests on that show? Yeah, like pop. I got banned from from oh. interviewing the pop stars, and uh, because I because they were te they were terrible. They were terrible. Right. Like bands, you yeah. Know, these like, real, real, like cheesy, horrific pop. They, like, they were trying to cater to kids. Yeah, right? I know, I know, I know. Right now, <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. It, but didn't you go on to more hosting gigs? L very thank. Thankfully, there was then a pop show. Yeah, on, on Channel Four that needed a sarcastic presenter. Which one? It was called Pop World. It was on Channel Four, and it ran for like, five years. So, oh, really? So you were yeah. on for five years, yeah, but you were, that. and then you started doing stand-up again started during again that because I felt like, oh, we 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 sort of got a good vibe. It was uh, myself and a girl called Makita Olive, and we had a very like a good chemistry together. But I thought this show could be funnier. Yeah, and I think the way to make it funnier is if I uh, find out that you know, figure out how to be funny again, and I started doing stand-up again. Because when I I actually didn't meet you, but the first time that I was aware of you was um, I was doing a show downstairs. Or was it up, downstairs in the Soho Theater? And you yeah. were doing one upstairs. Yes. And I, you were packing them out. I just remember there were people were there, like girls were lining up, and like you were very <laughs> popular. And I remember, like, who's that guy? And I remember someone told me, like, oh, he had a show on TV, and the, you know, the teenagers love him. And what did you think? Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, I'm oh, like, oh, he's, he's not oh, even a comic. He's not a yeah. comic. Yeah. He's some teenage girls. I'm yeah. fine then. Yeah, yeah. Then I feel great. Yeah, just some cute guy that's doing a yeah. thing. Well, I'm uh, I'm thrilled to be called a cute guy, so I'm just happy with that. <laughs> that was, when was that? It was only a few years ago. Do you remember that when you did some stuff at the Soho? I think it might have been. Yeah, it might be some work in progress. Right. That probably led uh, that probably led towards the numb show in the end. But it was a struggle for me in because 
I mean, because you did have that reputation on television as being a certain guy. Yeah, and, and then, I didn't want to do. I didn't want to be sarcastic and uh, cheeky on stage and stand up. I, I wanted to. I wanted to be. I don't know if I wanted to be, but I wanted to deal. I wanted to figure out who I was. I wanted to deal with what was going on uh, in my life. Right. I wasn't, and uh, so it, it turned out to be a bit more sensitive and a bit more thoughtful. It's hard to make that jump. Yeah, especially if people are expecting something different. And, did you? And, did you? You were willing to risk losing a couple. Yeah, because also my heroes were people who were really uh, <laughs> like people like Daniel Kitson and Stuart Lee would say things on stage like they're just you know they're not trying to build their audiences they're trying to sort of narrow them down to like the right people. Yeah, and uh, yeah. so I really went with that, but I think too much. I don't think so. I mean, I think I've talked to Stuart when I was in England, yeah. and he's great. I mean, that when the reason he quit stand up and then you know the yeah. way. You know, his attitude about it changed coming back mm -hmm. was fairly empathetic uh, you know, because that, that is a big, you know, for a guy like him who was hammering away for a long time with a very specific uh, point of view, who eventually got, you know, angry at people who didn't understand him to the point where he had to split and then to come back and then realize like, well, it's not their fault. Yeah. You know, I'm just not, I'm not what they signed. You know, this was not their idea of an entertaining evening. He said something very profound to me where he was looking out at somebody who wasn't understanding him and actually felt like, I'm sorry. I, it's just, I'm, it, there's nothing I'm going to do that's going to, you know, <laughs> bring you, you know, into this. And yeah. I, you just made the wrong choice tonight and we're just going to have to live with that. That's so, yeah, it's peaceful, that, isn't it? Compared it kind of is. Turning, I used to do a load of, I used to turn the, if there was a sort of older guy in the front row, he'd definitely be my father that night. You know, I'd do a load of stuff. I mean, yeah. he wouldn't be my father, but I'd make he'd it sit my in. Father. Yeah. You know, I'd do a whole, yeah. and uh, they're just people. Yeah. They're just people coming for a nice time. Right. And, <laughs> and, and not unlike the parents thing you said, a lot of times, when they seem to not be paying attention, who the fuck knows what their day was like? Yeah, you, you know, I've you, I've been to shows. I mean, you're going to sit at a show, and okay, okay, that was funny, and then maybe you're going to be like, oh, I got to do that thing tomorrow. What? Oh, you, you know, like you're going in and out yeah. of whatever the hell your life or is. Or I've fallen asleep in the front row of shows <laughs> in Edinburgh because I was really tired. <laughs> and you know what? And the before must be, it must be a terrible rejection. Yeah. But it, I was just tired. I shouldn't have sat in, I shouldn't have sat in the front row. Yeah. <laughs> but horrible, horrible. Yeah. Kitson's but, like, uh, yeah, he's uh, an interesting thing. He won't talk to me, but he doesn't want to. <laughs> He won't talk to you on on a mic. You know, he's a very he's got right. a, he's got a very he's a, he's a very principled person. What's and, the and principle? What's what's what do you think the principle is? Well, they're his. <laughs> I, I I don't know that there. You know, there's not like a book of kits and principles, but I think that you know he has. You know, he clearly has. Uh, whether he call it an aesthetic vision for himself or not, I mean, he's got a way he's going to do things, and that's that's all there is to it. Yeah, it's a good. <laughs> it's a, it's it's a per. He's got a perfect. Uh, I would say he's got a perfect life in terms of his career. He, yeah, he doesn't have to worry about any of the external nonsense that that other people have to worry about. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't do. Uh, he's a pure comic, a pure stage performer, right? He doesn't do TV. Real. He does some spots on TV, but he's not looking for a TV job. You know, he's he's he is what he is. Yeah, and it's. Uh... How would you explain? Because a lot of uh, my audiences uh, probably don't know him, and they're not going to hear him on here because he won't do it. And there's a limited. <laughs> Uh, there's a limited uh, amount of stuff they can watch of his. He's really like a pure live performer. Either you're going to see him live or that's it, right? Yeah, and sometimes like, like really late at night <laughs> yeah, or really early in the morning. I mean, he does everything he can so you don't come and see him. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's almost a savant-like person. He's annoying. Yeah. He's just annoying. Yeah. <laughs> Funny though, right? Oh, no, he's great. He's the best. I saw him do almost like uh, the last time I was in England, I saw him do... Uh, <laughs> A play. It wasn't really stand up, but it was there was a, a a story to it. Was it him sat behind a table? No, uh, it was about um, some. Uh, I can't even remember exactly what it was, but it had to do with uh, finding a manuscript of some kind by somebody, and he built uh, like it, it was. It was definitely a theatrical monologue yeah. that wasn't stand up. That was based on a, a fictional character. I think that he created, who was a writer, um, and it was it was fairly dense in a way. Because he's a very multi-leveled guy, but it certainly wasn't stand-up, and uh, it was challenging. I mean, it was challenging content-wise, you know, because you're sitting there like, "Well, is, there, is, is this a comedy? Is it is it not a comedy?" It was very thoughtful, and I think a little bit experimental. But I, I definitely respected him for that. I think what's good about him, yeah, is that, uh, and what I'm a bit jealous of, yeah, apart from his talent, is that he isn't interested in show business. 
Right. He's really only interested in what he gets up to on that stage. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I grew up kind of loving things on television, and I, 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 I was just in New York, and a friend of mine, his father was directing a film that Morgan Freeman and Diane Keaton were in. Oh, and really? And I got to be on the set of that film, and it was thrilling. Yeah. Like, not just thrilling because those people are names, but I got to see them act. I got to see take two, take three. Yeah. I got to see how they do what they do. Yeah. And this is a, it's a thrilling show business moment oh, yeah. in my life yeah and if you if you if you have you know if you have uh the desire to be part of show business then there's a whole load of other shit that goes on with with what we're up to here yeah you, you know there's a lot of marketing that has to go on there's appearances and there's talking to people and there's inter you know there's a whole load of stuff yeah and uh and you, you know you want to write a thing for television you want to do you know you want to write a film and so I'm I'm jealous that he doesn't have any of those desires seemingly. Right, then and he's at peace with it. He's at peace but he can just be he can just make his thing. Yeah. And uh but it's 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 annoying. <laughs> you know? It's annoying <laughs> because I feel like my you know I drive myself insane all the time about oh should what should I be doing this should I what should I be should I be you know is this is this still art? You know yeah. all this sort of stuff and it, you know he's over there and he's he's fine. He's the he's, he's also going to really enjoy us talking about him. Right, well good. <laughs> it, well I I know exactly what you're talking about. He you becomes know what I mean? the barometer of integrity. He yeah. is you know, he is the precedent that, you know, yeah. like, you know, none of us can attain kitsenhood. The truth <laughs> is, he's the biggest egomaniac of all of us. Right. Maybe not more than you. Well, it, it, I think that's true on some level because, like, you know, he's doing exactly what he wants to do and he's respected for that. Yeah. And he and he is able to be humble with it yeah. because, you know, it, the, the other things don't even enter his mind. He doesn't want to do it. But I think I'm working harder. No, I that, maybe that's true. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm not on the specific things that he is, but yes, you... You, well, what is it that you want ultimately? I mean, you're here. You're in town to do uh, the Radio Lab thing. Yeah, I've, that's why I was in Texas. That oh, with the Radio Lab. All right, so you're touring with uh, a Jed. little bit, just four shows. Uh huh. And I'm um, doing a couple of spots here and there, and uh, you know, various high-powered meetings. Right. To, uh, to you know, so that I can uh, make it in this town. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, that's it. So, you, like the, the, it's hard for uh, for British comics in a way because there, I, there's a handful of them that have found success here. And then there's a lot that don't, you know, either come or don't click. So it must be an extra added bit of challenge to to sort of appeal to American audiences and find your way. I found it easier actually when I was in New York last year doing yeah. seven weeks. Uh, it was like a, a, a residency at this uh, small theater uh, in St. Mark's. Uh, yeah, yeah. I found it easier actually. It was easier being this new guy that people were excited to see yeah. than when I went straight to Edinburgh afterwards and then had that whole thing of, oh, do these people like me for this. Da, da. But, you know, I had a load of stuff that I was making up in my head. Right, you're the new guy here. Yeah, it was just lovely to be the new guy. It's really exciting to be uh, this uh, this strange new person. And what about that? The the idea of of themed shows because that's not an American thing, and that is sort of I think something that came out of Edinburgh is that like every year you go back. You've got to name your hour. Yeah. And you've got to, to think, uh, you know, is it a story? Is it not a story? I imagine that sometimes those shows are not necessarily theatrical pieces as much as a way to frame stand up. Uh, like, what were the different themes of your shows as each year went by? Like, what was the first show you did at Edinburgh? Gosh. Well, the first one that was named was called No Self. And what was that about? What that was the was angle? That was about this sort of Buddhist idea that we need to get beyond illusory attachments. Uh, labels, uh, anything that, uh, anything you think, this is me, I am this, you know, I'm I'm this guy in these clothes, and anything that was kind of uh, uh -huh. made up. And uh, did I was you trying to figure out who I was beyond all those things? And were you able to to do that? Did you try that stuff? I yeah. mean, did you try to sort of move the ego aside to uh, to get at the true kernel of Simonness? Uh, oh, we you know you'd have to lose Simon. So did yeah, you... no Simon, no names. Yeah. No names. I, I think actually it was. I think it probably wasn't as funny as it, it could have been. Uh huh. I think it. I think it. Uh, looking back, I think it was a bit silly. But did you en <laughs> did you engage in those meditation practices? Did you try to do that stuff? Uh, I think at the time I was more theoretical, and now I practice meditation. Now I'm more into the actual work of it rather than. Well, didn't you tell a story in the show about some sort of retreat? Am I remembering properly? In Nam, I spoke about going to Peru. Yeah, what was that about? That was you the, actually went to Peru. Yeah, and what was the reason? To drink ayahuasca. Oh, so this is a hallucinatory journey. 
It was, yeah. So what happened? I mean, you don't have to do the bit word for word, but I, I, you know, I've read about that. I know William Burroughs was into it. Mm. Castaneda was into it. Yeah. I knew, but I never uh, sought it out. But back in the days when I did do drugs, but but you got compelled by who? What 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 spurred you on to say like I'm going to try that? Was it for material, or were you really looking for something? No, I was really. Uh, I was just inspired by an old school friend who um, at a, at a dinner we had told this story about going to this place and as he's told this story he looked like an eight-year-old boy like he was just so full of joy yeah and uh how um just how he'd been sort of healed i suppose by this this medicine they they were sort of keen to call it a medicine rather than a drug because otherwise it gets lumped in with things like cocaine and all this sort of stuff that isn't very helpful at all sure and this you know this was you know this has been used by the indigenous people for thousands of years to heal them it's sort of it's medicine but it's what not... did you think you needed to be healed of i mean what, what what like what were you hitting some sort of bottom with yourself yeah i i'd i'd been in therapy for about 2 years i felt like it we were, you know, it was very helpful, but it felt like there was something that I couldn't resolve. Like there was some sort of hidden memory that I couldn't get at. Were you reset? Were you depressed or anxious? Yeah, and or? I had so many appointments. So I was depressed, and I, every day there'd be another thing. There'd be yeah. okay, go to the acupuncturist, go to the yoga, go to the osteopath. I looked at my diary and I thought, oh my, how broken do I think I am? Right. And it was quite broken. Really? And what, how was it manifesting itself, though? I mean, what what in your life was well, not... Well, the show was called Numb because I, I stopped feeling anything. I'd, my defense mechanisms had become so strong uh-huh. that I was, I've, I was, I'd protected my entire self against the whole world, anything that could happen. Pain? I would, yeah, I, would, I, I was like, okay, well, I... You know, I, I'd, sorted, I'd, I'd sorted life out so that I couldn't feel any pain, but then I couldn't feel. So that's interesting because, like, because th- I've had periods in my life where you're like, "Am I, am I completely detached or am I evolved?" Right. Is, is yes. This... Yes. I felt that because all the Buddhist teachings right. are about this is just a you know a moment. This is not real. You know, this is not real. And right. I was like, oh yeah. I, I'll go. Yeah. Well, I'm not really feeling anything about that person dying, so I guess I'm a brilliant Buddhist. Right. I'm living it. Yeah. But no, we're not. No, you're not. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> That's what you learned. I was just numb, just totally numb. And you know, and 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 because uh, I don't drink alcohol or don't do don't do drugs or anything, so the so I, I, I there'd just be a lot of Ben and Jerry's ice cream and yeah, stuff. no, I'm I'm there with you. So to get, were you able to track like when it happened, or had you been feeling it your whole life? Did it evolve? Do you know, like, were you able to say, like, I've always been numb or at some point, you know, something got hurt inside of me where I'm like, I'm done. It's a bit personal, uh-huh. but some, I, in this in the second ceremony, there are four ceremonies and in uh, in each one, uh, you're sort of sat in a circle in darkness and you drink this uh, drink. And uh, I found myself like in, in, in the womb and then uh, I found myself. You know, I sort of was aware of myself in the room with these people, but also as a baby, mm-hmm. and uh, and then in the pram, and then I sensed things that were going on, and I don't know what this is. Yeah, you know, so I'm just, I'm just, I don't know what this is. But yeah. I I sensed things that were going on when I was a baby that I would yeah. not be able to remember and wouldn't be able to bring up in therapy. Right, and I resolved those during the ayahuasca ceremony, huh. and and then felt like uh, I I wasn't broken anymore. Like really felt like I, I was, and I thought, oh, yoga for just, just the joy of doing yoga. Right. At a moment where I, there was a moment where I talk about in the stand up, like becoming a cat in the in the right. ceremony, and it all becomes quite primal. And you sort of remember that all these, like that we're both guys, is all sort of, you know, sat here in shirts, yeah, and you're wearing glasses, and yeah, you've made your beard like that. But we're just animals with yeah. spit and blood, and yeah. you know, we're just animals really. Yeah. And I sort of became a cat in this ceremony, and sort of, you know. You know, really, like I was like ferocious. I was yeah. like a like, and I'd always become like, like a timid sort of. Okay, well, I guess I'm sort of like just a nice sort of like a nice sweet guy. I was a maniac cat yeah. guy in yeah. this thing, and sexual, uh-huh. and <laughs> yeah. all these things are a bit sort of embarrassing and a bit like Ugh, I can't yeah. be that guy. Uh, and so but you were in it. You didn't. I was in it. I was just yeah. I, I'm gonna. I, I, it wasn't. You know, it was. It was just. It was natural and uh, wasn't blocking. Uh, I wasn't blocking any aspect of myself. I yeah. was able to be completely free. Oh, okay. So the yoga, uh, like you don't, oh, I've got to do yoga because I'm not oh, my yeah. posture. And now, I, and then I had a moment where I thought cats don't do yoga. Yeah. They just sort of stretch <laughs> because they're cats. <laughs> yeah. And that so that sorts them out. And, I, yeah. and so uh, so that stayed with me. That idea that I, I I'll just do that because of the joy of doing it, or or uh, 
you know, just just doing doing something not for the result, just for the joy of just joy of, the joy of doing it. It's really helped with everything. It's helped with the stand up to remember that I enjoy it. It's not to get anywhere. Even doing something like I did Letterman when I was in New York a few weeks. I ago. I watched that. It was good. Was that all right? Well, okay, it was interesting good. because like you had that like I'm very sensitive to uh, to you know performers. Yeah. And you know, and and it, and it makes sense what you're saying now because there was a moment where when you stepped out there, you're like. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah. wow. Yeah. And, you know, I could feel that you connected, you know, that like I can, I, I can identify that because I tend to work like that where I offer more of myself than, than might be safe necessarily, but it's worth it. Right. And some guys just go do their act. And I knew you were doing stuff that you had planned, but there was definitely about 30 seconds where you were like, just you. And that's a, it's a tremendous risk, but the rewards of that are great because then people are listening to you in a different way. You know, you're not just a guy reeling off jokes, but you're like this this person that's having this uh, moment, and that's the best you can really hope for. That's very nice of you to say. Thank you. That's <laughs> good. Yeah, but it was it was terribly overwhelming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had to go there. I had to go there two days before just to sort of be in the theater, just because right, I thought good. I'm going to be too nervous. Are you I, a fan of Letterman? Yeah, I, yeah, I the love best, him. Right? Yeah, the best. Yeah, and and stole so much from him when I was on those shows. Hosting, oh, really? Just tactics. I just did him for a while <laughs> and so uh it was very strange to be there and uh i was i was ready you know because i thought i'm just gonna because you can think about there's so much go, that goes through your head yeah with something like that because it feels like it's a career move and it's a you know it's a it's a big rite of passage and it's a you know all this nonsense yeah and i thought let's just what about if we just enjoyed this five minutes did you well <laughs> 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 Maybe I enjoyed one minute. <laughs> I certainly found some joy in there. But it's a it's a very heightened moment that because I, I feel the same way about him and I and I remember my first time. You know, the the great thing about it is that you are in a genuine theater. You know, you're not in a TV studio. So there is that moment where, you know, you want to try to remember that there are cameras there, but you know, just by nature of being a performer or a stand up, you're like, Well, I'm I'm you know, I'm in a theater. Yeah. A little further back than I should be, but I you know, there's there's an audience there yep. and they're hot. You know, they're ready to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, 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 but you work that four and a half minutes, man. I mean, yeah. you know, like you're like, it's, it's hard for guys like us who do fairly long form stuff to isolate, you know, enough beats to, uh, to do four and a half. And it's a strange thing to do. To yeah. go, like it's, a, it's already a comedy show. Yeah. So for the, him to then go and now some stand up comedy, it's like, w what for? But, you, but, it, but it's established. I mean, yeah. I but, know, but it, I couldn't figure out, I couldn't figure out why. I was there. Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't figure out, like, as I walked out... <laughs> you were overthinking that. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> you were there to do stand-up. Yeah, I know, but I think that it shouldn't ever... It shouldn't ever look like that. Yeah. There should always be something that it's... Uh, like when I did uh, I did this show called Nevermind the Buzzcocks in the UK, and that was like a pop show uh -huh. that, uh, you know, it was a comedy show pretending to be a You know pop they show. tried that here. With you, right? <laughs> yeah, with you. Yeah, but you killed it. You, you met you. Yeah. You made it so it would never work again. Uh, I did. Yeah, I, right. not on purpose. I just didn't quite. I, I never. I don't think I fully understood the game, and I'm not sure <laughs> that. Uh, <laughs> no, I never did either. Yeah. I did it for three years, and I was always like, "This is such a stupid game. Why are we doing this?" Well, that, I think that's one of the reasons it didn't work. Aside from the fact that I was not in a good place in my life when I got that, right. I needed money. I don't know that I, <laughs> uh, I, I would have taken the job otherwise. And and I'm not sure I was the right guy to do it. But I don't know that Americans uh, really gravitate towards games without stakes. Like it's, right. it's that's really interesting. it's really just a, a an improvisational comedy show in the framework of a game show that's exactly. based on 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 pop music, and I I just don't think if there's no money changing hands, and there's you know there there were just no stakes to it. No, and yeah, I think we did some funny stuff, but it just it, it, there was a whole shift going on with that network. It just didn't work. That's it was, a, I, thank God. Did it hurt when I said that you ruined it? No, yeah. no, I knew I did. <laughs> No, I was just joking. I never saw it. I was just joking. Well, I don't know that I ruined it, but I don't know that um, I, w <laughs> I was really... You doing... know what? I think it's the, the, there's a culture in this uh, country of the, uh, the talk shows. Yeah. And there's a culture in, in the UK of those panel shows. And I think that maybe it just doesn't... Uh, they don't, we don't really have those five nights a week talk shows. Right. And you don't really have those panel shows. Is that what it's called? It's a panel show. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I like, there's a, some of them now. They're, they they kind of come and go. But like Hardwick's doing one, and where it's a it's a, it's framed as a game show, but it's not. It, there's no stakes. It's just for fun. But what I'm saying is, Mark, yes, there's I didn't nothing you could have done. <laughs> it's not your fault. It's not your fault. <laughs> Thank you for letting me off the hook. Are you speaking for your Mark, entire country? It's not your fault. <sighs> okay. Okay. 
not your fault. Thank you. Thank you. But it kind of, it kind of was. It's not your fault. Uh, okay. There's nothing you could have done, Mark. Okay, okay. You were just a child. I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I had a. It wasn't my fault. I was a child. Yeah. 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 I couldn't have known. You couldn't have done anything yeah. different to what you did. Yeah, that's true. You did what you knew how to do. That's exactly right. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's an important lesson in real life. Huge. Huge. That, you know, like, know your limitations and, and also, you know, know what you can and can't do. And then don't do something and then beat yourself. Because I used to do that. I don't know if you do this. I do things where, you know, I couldn't have done it any differently. I think I do things to beat myself up for. Oh. Do you ever do that? Would you, I'm like just what? hard like, on myself. Go on, talk to me. Talk to me about what? Um, like, I make decisions in my life where, like, it's sort of like, well, I probably shouldn't have done that. And, and I do it knowing, going into it, that I shouldn't do it. And then when I do it, I'm like, well, it was okay. But like I, I, I still pick at it. Like I, I'm just realizing this because I just got out of a relationship that you know I'm very hard on myself. And when you're in a relationship, you just let the other person be hard on you. And you know you're so engaged with their issues that you don't think of it. And then when you get out, you're like, oh my god, I, yeah, I'm still insecure. I still have, uh, you know, I'm still a little hard. You know. Oh yeah. 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 Because we're, it's. It's in. I don't it's know what just it difficult is. being alive, isn't it? For some people. No, I think for everyone, and some people sort of hide it. Or Some, they, they're no just, one has a podcast where they bang on about it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know? But I know, but I think that's, I think it is easier for some people because they've done some of the stuff that we're talking about. They, they've accepted yeah, something. But then you always, you, it's almost harder because you then you beat yourself up because you think, oh, I know this. Yeah. I know. How did I do that again? Well, can you identify that moment where you said you realized that, um, you know, when you were in the womb or wherever that, you know, where you, <laughs> Were you, were, now it just sounds ridiculous. No, it's not ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> but but do you can you identify what exactly got shaken loose to enable you the freedom that you you now have the comfort or the idea that it was it basically like you know stop taking everything so seriously you know be present you know what, what? no it was uh, no it's it's a bit too it's a bit too okay mm. Uh, okay, so what uh, if I uh, if you don't mind me being a slightly vague, mm -hmm. I I witnessed as that baby during this experience, this ceremony, mm -hmm. uh, uh, being present for something going on between my mother and father. Mm -hmm. That the baby version of me felt like it needed to do something oh. to stop it from happening. Right. Then something in the ayahuasca because it acted like a sort of therapeutic conversation for me I don't know if it acts like that for everyone else mm -hmm. but it acted like therapy for me cause, probably because I'd just been doing two years of therapy and mm -hmm. it, that was the language uh, it, it, it said to me like I just said to you jokingly you were just a child there's nothing you couldn't even crawl it said mm -hmm. you couldn't even crawl mm -hmm. and I start crying and I realise I forgive the baby I forgive the baby mm -hmm. and, uh, and then there's this great release wow and then I because I, 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 so many connections got made you know when when I when I, when I felt that baby feeling what was going on in that room, my everything tensed. My stomach tensed. My shoulders rounded. Uh -huh. I had very bad posture and was very shy as a child. Everything seemed to make sense mm -hmm. from that point. Now I might just be making it all up, and it might just be it might just be that whatever happens in that medicine just gives you what you need to know, you know, to in order to sort of let you get to the next stage. But uh, everything seemed to make sense, and I I thought, oh, uh, I'm fine. Right. I'm, I'm not I'm fine actually. Yeah. I'm you know, I'm nothing nothing's wrong. But that moment that that whatever that shame moment was had defined a good part yes. of your yeah, your it made me sh being. Made, made, it made me feel like I I couldn't go to parties as a kid. I couldn't leave my mother. I used to grab onto my mother's leg. Yeah, you know, it made me feel like I needed to protect and save and fix and mm. and uh, it was a nonsense. It was a, huh. it was a it was a false perception right. that I had as a baby. You know, and that had been ingrained in your wiring, yeah, deep, completely unconscious, and huh. uh, and and so after that, there was a freedom. There was a a feeling like I wasn't, uh, yeah, that I wasn't broken, and uh, self acceptance. Yeah, self acceptance. Yeah, yeah, I suppose all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's fucking great. Yeah, it feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. And then I have to remember it, though, because I still still, I slip in and out of, uh, you know, there's still moments, obviously, when I still feel like, oh god, why. Why get out of bed and do what for? Right, you know, and then you know the worst sentence is, and then what? Right, because once you've done some stuff, uh, 
Like, this may be the opposite oh, of your shit. story, really, because your no, story is I mean, really that there were opportunities that you missed when you were younger, and that now it's all sort of happening for you, right? Kind of, but I mean, no, I know exactly what you're talking about, is that, like, that, what, you have to fight meaninglessness. You have to fight meaninglessness, exactly. And my, why I mention that is because my story was that, uh, you know, I was working since I was 18, and I, there was a, this pop show, and this comedy show, and then made a sitcom, and I, and I always and doing lots of stand-up and things, and a special and another special, and uh, I always feel like, uh, even at the start of an Edinburgh festival, of a month-long festival, you know, you, you build up to this, uh, this hour-long show, and then after the first night of the month, if it was a film, if that was a film, yeah. you know, the credits would roll after that first night, you're bowing, yeah. the applause yeah. credits roll, but it's not, you then have to do it again for 29 nine nights oh my god and you think well what and it's always and then what and you think and when i made the sitcom that we did in the uk i thought well that's just gonna be it that's gonna be the thing right. and then i can retire right <laughs> you retire know? to what though i don't know but i just thought i'm tired yeah I, I, it's exhausting writing that thing and and acting oh. and and you know editing the th- and i thought i'm just gonna and then, but no but then people say well, what are you what are you up to at the moment so i just did a i just, just did, did a thing. thing yeah it's on dvd yeah just, you I'm, know? Li- I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of this right now like I'm right. in the, like because I'm doing uh, the second season of my TV show, right? And you're you're just sort of like, well, you know, I did one. It was <laughs> I did quite, one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if we when, were in a tribe and we were the people who brought the berries, yeah, people would say thank you for the berries. They would they wouldn't go, oh, any any more berries coming up? Well, maybe you they said, no, eat those berries. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you brought them, so you need to bring us more. <laughs> yeah, bring you're us the guy more. who knows how to get the berries. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah, but what, it, it's a ridiculous complaint, though, isn't it? Because of what a joy to do this and all that stuff. But it's but hard it's, But it's still work. I mean, work is work. And and yeah. then, but that 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 whole idea of like I haven't experienced it, you know, until recently, until like you know, because I'm no longer in a relationship, mm-hmm. where you know I'm just sitting with myself, and you, you're just sort of like, what's the fucking point of all this? How yeah, long was the relationship before? Three and a half years. Well, that's a long time. But I've been through this before. I mean, but, but like, but like, I don't know because you'd want to identify it as depression, right? But I don't think it is depression. I, I think it is some sort of um, over being overwhelmed. Like, right. like I feel that whatever I would identify as depression is just this weird anxiety that gets to such a pitch mm-hmm. to where I'm exhausted. Right. You, you know, I mean, things are very simple, and there are some joys in life that don't revolve around eating ice cream and jerking off. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know it's Name the per- them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, I've been told. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but but you still battle with that on some level. You still sort of like one day you wake up and you're like, ugh. It's just where the thinking part of us is overdeveloped and the feeling part of us is underdeveloped. I okay. Think, if I'm to, be, if to be really simplistic about it. I think We're that's just thinking too much. Yeah. Cats just wandering around, eating and shitting. Right, right. I mean, I mean, I mean if we just... All the things that we have to think about yeah. as human beings, like yeah. the ambition, the competition. It's and crazy. The, I mean, it's it's madness. Yeah. And we've got the internet. Oh, no. I mean, cats don't have the internet. It's easier. I know. Easier. I, yeah. It's, it's much easier. Sure, sure. It's much easier. <laughs> yeah. And they don't have, they don't have forward thinking, yeah. really. <laughs> they don't have a uh, yeah, recollection that is yeah. vivid. Yeah. Do you, have- you have to, I think what you have to do is, I, mean, I think this is why religion exists probably, yeah. is because you have to then put rules in place. So you don't do things like wake up and get straight onto the laptop and yeah. and, and and checking your emails. So you have to meditate. You have to meditate first. I don't know how. I don't know if I don't meditate for three days, I get quite grumpy. Do you? Yes. So how how often do you meditate? Like every morning. Like for how long? Twenty minutes. So it's become a bit looser since going to Peru. It's become a bit of a looser experience for me. It's become a bit more weird and primal. Oh yeah. Yeah. What's your process? I mean, if you were going to tell me, okay, Mark, you need to start meditating. Here's what you do to start. Uh, find a nice seating position. Yeah, and don't uh, don't do anything other than uh, be aware of, of of what's going on. Uh, close your eyes and just be aware of the sounds. Maybe uh-huh. Uh-huh. and don't try to and, and and things. Then thoughts come up. Yeah, don't try to get rid of those thoughts. Yeah, I mean I'm not an expert, but don't try and get rid of those thoughts. Just go. Oh, there's a thought. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah. it goes. Yeah. Then something, oh, memory. Oh, uh-huh. okay. There it goes. Yeah. Oh, that's the sound from traffic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then what that does is it, it's not just for the sake of that. It then trains your brain. Uh-huh. So the next time, let's say you're in an argument or something or something comes up, then you go, oh, it's just a person saying those words. Yeah. And then, you, then it's, everything's fine. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that's yeah. A, or whatever um, it is. Oh, okay. Well, that's yeah, yeah. Letterman. Okay, I'll go and do a spot on Letterman. Oh, okay. This will be over soon. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, now you've got to be in the moment. No, right, that's, that's the true. key. Oh, uh, that's true. That's yeah, true. That's the worst. I got up this morning. I've, so I'm basically doing these. Well, I'm doing three things today, and this is the middle one. Yeah. Uh, you know, part of me goes, you know, because I'm a bit tired. I think, oh, I'll just get today done. And then there'll be some more. But <laughs> You know, yeah. and then I thought, what about enjoy today? Yeah. What about really enjoy doing this podcast with right. Mark Maron? Well, that's a fun thing to do. Right. Do you have dread? I have dread sometimes. <laughs> do you have dread? I have dread. It's <laughs> 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 so funny. This whole situation is so funny. But but that's what you're talking about, like with the tomorrow thing. You're it's like, like oh. anytime you're well, not so much like that, but it's like, all right, well, this is fun. We're doing this, but like, oh, fuck, in two hours, I have to. Okay, you know it's not like uh, it's not like oh no, but it's sort of like ah, I'm gonna you know then I got you know you start going through it in your head and then you just have to stop that. Yeah, you, because your your brain will just manufacture shit for you to freak out about. Mm, because it's because that's what it, it's that uh, what's that thing that thing know. that everyone always talks about that uh, flight or, fight or flight fight or flight. Thing. Sure, sure, you gotta gotta be ready. Gotta be ready. Gotta be yeah, ready. But yeah. what's happening? There's no bear in the yeah, room. No, that's not, there's, there's no not, bear in the room. There's a bear inside though. There's a bear right inside my head. Mm. Mm. Is there though? Are you doing stand-up? I think you've made it up. Yeah, probably. We make up that. I'm gonna have to go to sit with some Wyahaska and kill the bear. Yeah, kill the bear. If if you do, if they say it's a calling, the ayahuasca thing. Yeah, I I think those days are behind me. I'm gonna have to do it some other way. What do you? Why the? Why they say? Oh, because you're an Uh, addict. Yeah, I don't do it anymore. Yeah, it's tricky. It, it, it's actually got counter-addictive qualities in that it tastes more disgusting the more time, the more times you drink it, and uh, and and it oh, heals yeah. people of their addiction. I heard that. I, I think I. But I, it I, is I, a trick. I've got a friend who's an addict, and I was talking to him about it, and he said it's just you know it's just a risk. It's just yeah. too much of a risk for him. Yeah, because it'll just open the door to like, oh, if I can put that in my mouth and have those feelings, why not do yeah. what I used to do? I think it wouldn't though. I think it. I th- I think it's, there's a real difference between that and uh, and and any other drug that I'm really aware of. Sure, it's, it's, it's you know it's, it's a it's, it's like, not it's not like a fun trip. It's not like no no it's people like, go yeah. and they go whoa what a night yeah it's horrific yeah and it, you you had to take it how many times <laughs> four times yeah and was the cat on the fourth time cat was on the fourth time yeah so that's good so it worked I mean by uh, after the third time you were like oh, I'm not quite a <laughs> uh, there was a feeling like I was reborn in the second. Nothing happened in the first ceremony because I was so stuck Freaked in my own yeah. head and trying to control it. Mm-hmm. And then I, as soon as I surrendered to it in the second ceremony, things started happening. And then the third ceremony, I can't really remember what happened, but I guess nothing much because I can't remember. And then in the fourth ceremony, so it was like I was reborn in the second one. And then in the fourth one, I became a man. Reborn in the third one. Sorry, reborn in the yeah. second one. And then the fourth one uh, became a, like a man. Yeah. Uh, became like somebody who was. Uh, able to just sort of be in a room you know yeah <laughs> like, yeah like, right. like men own yourself <laughs> yeah I, like uh like i was a yeah i mean there's a, a lot guy of, there's a lot of stories in now i all i think of is the stories that are in numb now yeah uh but yeah yeah a man among men a man among yeah and, oh, and among looking men. like take like looking out for other people uh-huh you know like yeah. i was, remember i was like you i mean this is a podcast so nobody can see but you'll be able to see so normally i'm sort of like like you describe Fold how it I up. look. Yeah, you're Fold a it up, crouched. and I'm just hopefully yeah. everything's going to be all right. <laughs> yeah. And I found myself sat, like legs open, yes. and like leaning forward and like looking around, <laughs> yeah. going, "Okay, you okay? Yeah. All right, let's do this. Are you okay? Is everyone all right? Okay, come on then, let's go." <laughs> you were a leader, a leader, right? Yeah. And then sort of, and then pointing to yeah. like this attractive guy, yeah, to the, to the side of me, yeah. and then sort of like telling him, "Come to me, <laughs> come to <laughs> yeah, me," yeah, like yeah. that, like yeah, that yeah. madness. Yeah, like, and I normally in a sort of social setting, I'm like, "Oh, I can't possibly talk to that person. He's, a, you know, that's why I'm right. such a creep." I'm like, "Come to me." Uh-huh. Yeah, how'd that feel? It felt it felt amazing, and he did come, and he had a lovely time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did any of that stick with you? Yeah, uh not as much as it should have done. <laughs> but yeah, a little bit. I mean I'm in a relationship now, but uh how but long? Two years. Oh really? It's great. Is it sorry to say that oh, after no, you no, just no, broken no, up no. with someone. It's, okay. it's terrible, it's terrible. No, no, it's I terrible. Don't You're better you... off on your own with no, your guitars. No, no, I'm not. I'm I, I need to be for a little while, you know how that goes. Yeah. Gotta reprocess. Two years, that's good. That's mm. long. Yeah, it's the longest it's I'm I've just broken my record of of being in a relationship. Is he in the show business? No. Good. The opposite. Oh, good. What's the, the opposite of show business? What's the opposite business? of show business? Reality? E- economics. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's, it's good to it's good to be uh, with somebody yeah, who's not uh, caught up in this crap. I think so. Yeah, I've been with show business people before and it, it, it's I think it's a difficult. You know, it's it, it's it's enough one person having, you know, 
It's just it's yeah. just too it's too much it's just too much self awareness. Too much self awareness and also there's you know the undercurrent of of competition and ego sort of like you know how can you got that when did, you know when am I going to get this and what you know. difficult, difficult What's a good relationship? I mean what do you think makes it good? I think uh, honesty, right? Yeah. I think just talking. Yeah. Just talking. Just just being being unafraid to say the thing that you're worried makes you sound like a terrible person <laughs> yeah and then you yeah. re- you you know you say out it's like the stand up that's why i love stand up yeah it's because i can say these things that i think are shameful and embarrassing and then people laugh and it feels like they're saying not only is that funny but we feel that too and it's and and thank you for saying it because now we don't feel as ashamed you, and embarrassed. yeah you release something yeah and uh it's you know it's a it's a and and i think the same in a relationship uh you know, to be able to say to be able to say something that you think uh, is 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 immoral or is is inappropriate, and then the, the other person says, "Oh yeah, of course, of yeah. course," because we're both human beings. Right. That's why you're feeling that. Yeah, that's why. Go, that oh, happens. phew. Okay, good. So you're not good. <laughs> so you don't think I'm t- you're not going to leave me? Yet. Okay, yeah. good. Phew. Oh, that's great. So yeah. what what are you hoping to? Uh, what, and the sex. Sex. <laughs> sex very important. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that's got to stay good. <laughs> it has to be nice. Yeah. Sorry, um, what are you saying? What are you What are you hoping will, will happen here in the states for you? Well, in the, the big picture, the healthy part of me, yeah, says, "Hey, this bit right now is just great." Yeah. What day is it today? Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, yeah, Sunday afternoon with Mark Marin in yeah. his shed. What yeah. a dream! Yeah. And then the and and oh, we're doing some stand up this week. That's good. People yeah. will f- come and laugh and oh, well, good. Yeah. Great, and then I'll go home. Yeah. And the unhealthy part of me uh-huh. goes. Oh, yeah. Why aren't you Tom Hanks? <laughs> well, everyone loves Tom Hanks. They don't all love you. Why don't they all love you? What's wrong with you? How can you make them How love you? How can you be more like Tom oh Hanks? Oh, my God. Why, you'll never be like Tom Hanks. Uh, <laughs> so you'd like to do movies? <laughs> yeah, everything, I think. I mean, I'm into... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I grew up, I grew up watching television yeah. going to see films. Have you done films? I've done one a uh, very low budget film and I really enjoyed doing it yeah yeah and the series that you have uh in in the UK is is it it's just available on DVD now or yes we did two seasons how now. many is that 20 oh no 12 12 oh god that's the best way to do it yeah to, and and <laughs> now expo- even that felt like too much well explain to me how that works I talked to Simon Pegg about it but um you was it your choice to not do more or how does it I felt like uh I wrote it with somebody but it was I suppose it was based on more of my pain uh-huh. than, uh, than his and I felt like I'd written all the pain out of me and right. then any more would be gratuitous right like we could have done a third uh, se- seasonal series uh, but uh it would have just been for the sake of entertainment mm-hmm. and uh I I felt like it would get too broad and silly and, th- and no one tried to muscle you into doing more was it successful it was uh it was I suppose it was a sort of cult hit maybe is mm-hmm. probably the right way to say it what was it called grandma's house uh-huh. and it was probably a bit too depressing to to sort of reach uh you know an enormous amount of people right but the people when I when people come up to me and they say they uh they watched it and they like it that there's there's a very it's a very personal uh yeah. response you know right. it's like i had i had an aunt like that or right. you know it's like right. oh my god you really got that thank you you know it's that sort it's of the best that's the best. the best thing that's the best but you're sort of in a in a tricky place with your the the hunger of your ego and and the sort of yeah the ego wants you know that it, uh, it's uh but actually the truth is yeah. I and mean, what i have to remember is that I've left shows each time when they've got a bit too popular. Uh-huh. Cause partly because I think, oh, now it's going to just turn to hate, so I better get out of here quick. On your part, you're going to yeah. hate them. Or no, they're, no, no, they're no, going to hate you? Like the story has been told that this right. is a good show. That's yeah. been out there. Right. That's what people are saying. So right. if I just stay here, at some point they're going to start saying, I oh, used yeah. to be good. Yeah. So yeah. partly I get out of it. But partly also, certainly with uh, the, 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 the panel show, uh, it was a bit too... Um, it was a bit too much. It was a bit too too impersonal. People coming up to me and, and sort of liking it, and and for things that I felt like weren't the best bits of it. Right. And it became. And I thought I've got to. This is not. I don't think I'm expressing the truth of who I am in this. Right. It becomes a. Uh, it becomes a job. Yeah. Too. And and also like not. You know, I I like being. Uh, I really like being the new boy. Yeah. I like being here because I'm the new boy. Yeah. And I thought, okay, well, I've done that. I was I was the new boy for the first season of that. And I didn't really know what I was doing, and it was exciting and fun. And now the, I sort of know what I'm doing now. People have expectations, and it's for me to carry on being how I've been so far. And I thought, okay, let's be the new boy in sitcoms now. Yeah. 
And then when that was, then then I thought if we do a third season of this, is no one's going to go, oh, oh, that's surprising. Yeah. It's the, oh yeah, it's like like the last right. season. Yeah. I mean, it's a shame, really, that I don't just... Because once I learn how to do something, I stop doing it. It's a shame I can't just keep going. Yeah, I... I, I <laughs> it could be better for the audience. I know, I feel... <laughs> yeah, I feel I, I can definitely relate to that. Because then it becomes a different challenge. It becomes a challenge of, like, um, consistency. And, mm. and, and sort of, like, figuring out what works about that, that version of you. And how many times can you hit that thing. Yeah, and I don't want to... I yeah. think, and, and with stand-up as well, as soon as you... Uh, you know, as soon as it's sort of branded, yeah. like I don't know how you feel about this. Like I was, like I, I've been promoting this, uh, the DVD of Numb in the UK, and I think mm-hmm. it will be on. In I think it will be available in America in some sort of internet form. I'm not sure which, uh, which Netflix thing. or something. One of those kinds yeah. of things at some point. But I've been promoting it, and uh, you know, they ask what it's about, and I've been so I've been keep saying the word depression. I keep saying you know these words, and I there's a concern that because uh, I don't f- I don't feel those things as strongly as I did before. I don't want to now that I don't want to be like oh yeah oh see you're the sad guy yeah you know that oh yeah it's tricky it's tr- it's tricky wanna... how to pro- like because people are like yeah I think you'd be a little bit more upbeat about how you're presenting it yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's about rising above depression and having a rebirth yeah yeah, yeah nobody hard... nobody really wants to hear it you know when they when you say that anyway it's it's hard when you're a thinky kind of comic because like if you actually are if someone describes you or you describe yourself a lot of people if they don't know you're like wow that doesn't sound like a fun time. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. it is a fun time. But it is. And people are laughing. Yeah, at the we're audience. moving through things. Yeah. Yeah, we're helping the world. We're so, we're trying, aren't we? We're trying. <laughs> but I think my what was my point? I had some sort of point about uh, brand, once you brand something, once uh, you name something, it sort of it disappears a bit. It doesn't doesn't really exist anymore. I think that's true. Yeah, I think it's because it it, it it's no longer about you. It's about the that thing. Because we're constantly changing and evolving and all those things, and yeah. you can't really you can't really. Uh, you know, once you name something, yeah, it's like, oh, so you're that. That's yeah. what you are. Yep. Yeah, which is why God, yeah. you know, it doesn't get you. are not supposed to name God because then it's not, he knew. not he the knew. thing. He knew what it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's become a hell of a brand. Great marketing. Though. Yeah, it's so a good. Amazing brand. <laughs> no matter what, no matter how you slice it, God seems to be a very powerful brand in the world. <laughs> it's good yeah. talking to you, man. Is that all right? Will you edit that into something that sounds like a real human being? Uh. <laughs> You're definitely a real human being. I, you know, you helped me out. I mean, I thought that was a good conversation. You know, yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm just asking these things now because I don't want it to end. I know. I, you, well, we can hang out for a little while. Longer. <laughs> That's our show. I uh, I like that guy. I don't want to say I like that kid because he feels younger than me. Hey, he was younger than me. All right, look, go to WTF Pod for all your WTF Pod needs. Oh, don't forget, my special Thinky Pain is available at, on Amazon and many other outlets. Yeah, go get Thinky Pain if you didn't get it on Netflix. You can get it now. You can own it. You can own it. Where you buy DVDs, it is available. How's that? I think I'm manic. I freaked out today. Panic, manic, panic. The two things that will guarantee send a... Fear to the very core of your being in the moment that you feel them are what's that lump I better google it and holy shit what's going on with my bank statement am I a victim of identity theft those two things are the the scariest things your brain can do to you cancer and identity theft panic city of course, I can get my panic up for just about anything. You know, if I if I can't decide on a pair of pants, yeah, going without today. Keep hitting that. Freaked out. Thought I had a, I was a I was in an identity theft situation. Turns out, uh, I don't I don't really understand uh, how online banking works. That's all. I didn't understand what that thing was on my statement, and boy, did I go someplace. I went first to like someone's ripping me off who made a list of names you know uh judged them thoroughly uh thought i knew people that i didn't and not only that they were criminals it's going to take legal action then i went to like the faceless person who was taking money from my account and you know what else are they doing what else am i going to find out how is this going to go it was a bad rabbit hole then i called the bank up and the guy explained to me no no that's a check you wrote and i was like oh okay that's a good thing all right. 
Well, I'm glad I didn't email people and tell them that legal action was underway. And uh, I guess I just lost a, probably two weeks off my life because of that stress. But uh, appreciate your help, and I'm an idiot. Yep. All right, that's all. Boomer lives!